What do you think um, makes a person conservative as opposed to liberal? Like what what factors go into that to make that happen? Fear mostly. This has been shown mm -hmm. in studies too. It's not mm -hmm. just me being like a like a you know. Um, essentializing it but conservatives have a naturally higher fear response by naturally i don't mean like inherently you know obviously socialization plays a role in this but yeah they just they have a higher fear response like immigration for example like it just sets off fear fear and disgust those are the big ones mm -hmm. it's interesting to hear you say you feel like people's minds can be changed right because i've talked mm. to a lot that that don't feel like that that you know you can have all the facts you can go back and forth and you're just if you go into a conversation you're unlikely to change somebody's mind so what makes you feel like you're able to move somebody and are you know can you point that out well it's kind you... of the point of what i do so i feel like i'd have to be exceptionally cynical to to not feel that way um i like i have to hope right you know when i argue with conservatives mm -hmm. and their audiences see it you know i i always i always hope that leads to a positive outcome um, at, at the end of, um, at the end of the day, uh, oh, I can help you answer this question. Well, how do you feel about guns? For me, it's, it's, <laughs> it's mostly a matter of political capital. There are so many guns already in this country, um, and people feel so strongly about them. And there are so many other ways to address the negative externality of guns that the idea of like, I feel like we could place a really strong wedge to pull conservatives and libertarians over by not being like super anti-gun or whatever. It just seems like politically inefficacious, you know? It would be like, I don't know, in a, in a policy perspective, I feel like banning like high fructose corn syrup would also be really good, but in terms of political expediency, like it would le it would be led by like the gr the most American opposition movement in all of history, you know, like of all the, uh, uh, you know, food companies linked arm in arm with everyone who's ever enjoyed any food sold in this fucking country because they would, you know, they get all the TV ads about how liberals are taking away their tasty syrup. And, you know, it's, it's it's you know, it's just a matter of what you can actually get done um, to, to finish to finish your point um with uh uh changing people's minds you know you don't change people's minds with a better argument for the most part uh sometimes but not always uh most of the time in my experience the best way to change a person's mind is to establish yourself as a reputable source of information as somebody worth listening to and then you know plant the seeds of a different perspective in their head and wait for them to bloom you know, people are very defensive, uh, you know, the idea of just like listening to a guy shouting online, you're going to change your mind on something you care about. Very unlikely. Very, very unlikely. Um, but if you make yourself come off like this cool person, you know, like you're cool, you're trustworthy, you're reputable, you're funny, you know, people are more likely to open up and think like, you know, okay, maybe I disagree with him on this point, but I'll hear him out. They hear you out. And after that, you've got a way better shot at changing their mind than you ever would if you were some antagonist uh trying to force a new perspective down their throat so it does sound like you use you know some of the things that i've discussed with people because you're building a trust and rapport then right and then kind of easing your way in rather than like you're not hoping that in one moment one interaction you're going to change somebody's mind yeah that will very very rarely happen unless both people are coming at something from a strictly empirical perspective which is almost never the case um, maybe sometimes in academia, this could be the case. Even if you look in academia, people like will, will die on a hill and burn their careers to the ground because they can't accept that their data was wrong. Like even people dealing with empirical information in an empirical field when proven empirically wrong, they still won't accept when they're wrong sometimes. It, it's just humans are just really bad at readjusting their perspective in line with new information. We're just like really bad at it, like borderline inherently, so... When when you're talking with somebody that uh, is very far to the um, you know, polar opposite of you, like say you're talking to somebody that is a white supremacist, and you're being very, uh, I would say, borderline hostile at some point once they've provoked you, mm -hmm. I would say, yeah. I mean, you usually start out pretty cool, and then they say some stuff that's just, all right, that's it. And then it's kind of like there's a switch that goes off. Um, are you not hoping to change their mind or are you doing it for the audience well sometimes most of the time really it's for the audience i mean one person i'm talking to versus thousands that are listening usually it's 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 to my betterment to focus on the, the larger crowd um but in terms of changing a person's mind directly you know in in a way if they disagree with me they're kind of like a proxy for people listening who might disagree with me you know 
And I've noticed, especially for far-right people, that I said you have to establish yourself as a trustworthy figure. Well, one thing conservatives really, really like is strength. Posing strength is really important for them. And a lot of them, and you see this in far-right circles especially, they really get off on the idea that they're like these... Um, like aggressive uber warriors who are different than those cucked liberals and conservatives you know that they're strong and uncucked and they're always right and blah -de blah um they don't value introspection or like growing or learning that much so i i find it's often really effective to tear them down by being meaner than they can be funnier than they can be you know unflappable because a lot of these people have emotional issues right like it's not as though like clan rallies and neo-nazi groups are full of the most emotionally upstanding people like a lot of these people are desperate for some kind of role in life like they're, they're looking for validation from people anybody no matter how they can get it um so it's not like they're like the toughest you know group to crack or whatever so anyway you know you you posture you know you show you're stronger you're funnier you're not bothered by them they're bothered by you blah -de blah and when you do that you know maybe the person you're talking to won't change their mind that's pretty tough to guarantee but uh maybe other people who are listening they'll hear all that and they'll think like oh well maybe that guy was a cucked loser you know maybe maybe i would have done better in their position um but when they grow critical of that person who represents them they grow more critical of themselves that's the point, you know, everyone is an XP for everyone else, just to varying degrees, and if you can make them distrustful of people on their side, you can make them distrustful of their own positions, and that, I hope, would lead to introspection. Do you feel like you have some people in your community now that have, like, come over from other spaces or from some of these A conversations? Lot of a lot of people in my community are former like alt writers or conservatives or skeptics or libertarians. Yeah, like a lot, a lot. Usually when we pull in my chat, the answer is like around a third of them, uh, which I think is a pretty remarkable number for like a left-leaning content creator. I don't think there are many current conservatives who watch me at the moment. Um, usually I think that's a pretty marginal portion of my audience because it's been a while since I've broken off and fractured another person's community like Sargon's or whatever, but it'll happen again. So how far, like when they switch over, how dramatically do their views change? That's interesting coming from far right. And then now do they actually consider themselves on the left? Yeah, I, well, I think a lot of it, I think a lot of it has to do with um, why they were far right. Because I've had convos with like former alt writers in my community. And um, the, the common narrative that I see basically is that they were feeling frustrated by problems in the world and they misattributed it to issues that the far right would get them to see. Um, and I helped them see that those issues were caused by other things and that their lives were being made worse by the far right. So like, this is one of the reasons why there's like almost a stereotype of people who used to be far right who are now like trans girls, you know? Because a lot of people often who feel frustrated with their, um, who feel frustrated with their um, masculinity, like their masculinity is challenged or they don't feel secure or comfortable in it, will overcompensate by participating in the politics of ultra-masculinity, of the far right, you know? But if you break that down and it's like, okay, well, are you this? Are you happy? You know, this, that, the other. Well, then it's kind of like a snowball rolling down a hill. Um, I really do feel like a lot of far right people at their like heart are good people um, who are just... They've just been given the wrong information on the world, given the wrong problems, and they're responding to it, of course, in the way you would expect somebody to when given all the wrong info by the wrong people. I, I think they can be moved over. There are people whose politics are, like, pretty much entirely based on disgust and hatred, like, explicit, fervent hatred. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a mental illness. I think those people should be in fucking loony bins. Um, you know, I, I don't know if those people can be moved over quite as much. Uh, sometimes maybe, but for the most part, those people seem like lost causes. I think they're minorities, um, though, in the in the far right. Yeah, I tend to agree with you on that, that, that if there isn't like malition behind it, you know, people just have the wrong information, you can, you can move them. But if they're just, it's solely based on hate, you know, then that seems highly unlikely that you're going to move those folks. Yeah, it's difficult it's possible i mean you know oftentimes the i've noticed the, the biggest pattern for people who are super ultra hateful at least in the modern world today like with the alt-right or whatever it seems to be like um basically they feel like their society is being torn apart by x minority group whether it be gays or trans people or like the jews or whatever 
You know, they, they feel like everything is being ruined by them. And they feel contemptuous because not only is everything being torn apart, but um, the, um, the, the like, mainstream media won't, like, let them talk about it or whatever. And, and that contempt broils over into hatred. And as a product of that, um, you know, they, they become very performatively cruel. And that's really tough to break into, I think. Because I think the emotional impulses that lead to that are very ugly. But it is possible. It's just, you know, yeah. Yeah, uh, it is. Some people are... Everything's a spectrum to me. And there are people that you on the far end of a spectrum of being able to be talked into stuff and they're just so far over there they're just there's nothing you can do but i think what what you're saying you know when you're talking to someone that's like that you might be helping people that are closer to the middle seeing the two points and hearing your points are more logical yeah uh, yeah there's always that middle right you know most a lot of people who are part of far-right communities are not themselves what we would consider far-right. They're more, like, uh, sympathetic to the far-right. It's the same with the far-left, right? Like, I am, I would consider myself far-left. Not every person in my community is a communist. Not even close. Probably less than half, honestly. Um, a lot of them are, like, you know, reformist socialists who are sympathetic to my ideology, or liberals who think that a lot of my arguments are on board um, even if they don't agree with all of my end state prescriptions. So, it, it, you know, there's, there's always, it, it, there's, there's, there's always so much room to work with, you know?